What do you call kids that are scared of Santa Claus? Claustrophobic. Hey there, hi there, ho there, Andrew here. We're talking about Santa's sleigh. Woo. I feel like a disembodied head. No, not that Santa Slay. We're talking about the 2005 Christmas movie that should be considered a horror slash black comedy. Yeah, if this comes to your mind when you hear the term black comedy, then seriously, read a book. You need a little education. A black comedy is when morbid humor comes into effect. You know, basically making light of something that might be considered a little too taboo. Like making Santa Claus a homicidal maniac. This movie stars former pro wrestler Bill Goldberg as Santa Claus. It's written and directed by David Steinman, and we open the movie on Christmas Eve with the Mason family. As they're sitting down for Christmas dinner, we get to see that they are an extremely dysfunctional family. Come to think of it, can you name me a functional family? When all of a sudden, Santa comes down the chimney. Yeah, more like through the chimney instead. And before the chaos begins, Santa says the line, yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. This is an important line, mostly due to the fact that it sets up the humor for the rest of the flick. And I keep on thinking that Goldberg's Santa looks a lot like Christopher Lambert's Raiden, just a lot more bigger. Anyway, so suddenly Santa impales the hands of Darren who is the patriarch of the family, played by James Conn. Annie Sorrel, or is it Sorrel? So what? Who's one of the twin daughters named Taylor faints at the sight, and this causes her to fall backwards on the dog's bed, impaling her throat. The mother named Virginia, who is played by Fran Dreischer, or is it Drescher? Who cares? Who is first set on fire and then drowned in eggnog. Yeah, go ahead, soak in that picture a little bit there. It's one of the highlights of the movie for me. Now, the character Jason, played by Chris Catan, decides to go mano a mano against Santa himself. That, of course, ends horribly. Santa then rips a leg off of a table and smashes the head of the a daughter named Gwen, who's played by Rebecca Gayhart, all while she's screaming that she's been good. That's a lie! I've seen Rebecca Gayhart in other horror movies, and she definitely hasn't been good in any of those. So the other sister of the twins, named Beth, who's played by Alicia Lauren, or is it Alicia Lauren? I don't care. She decides to make a run for it, then Santa goes ahead and grabs a star off of a Christmas tree and shurikens her right in the back. Santa then comes back to Darren, stuffs a turkey leg down his throat, suffocating him in the process. Honestly, James Caan has had it worse in other movies. Like The Godfather. See that back in the day they had to put fishing line on your face there and pull out bullet holes and use squibs to simulate gunshots. You know, nowadays they just use computers. And if you don't know what special effects squibs are, read a book. Preferably on special effects. Now you might be thinking to yourself, hey, Santa killing a bunch of people on Christmas Eve? That's a little sacrilegious, isn't it? I mean, these people must know that they're going to heck in a handbasket for making fun of a beloved Christian character in Holiday, right? Un Till you realize the guy that's playing Santa is Jewish. And everybody that he killed is Jewish too. So yeah, I don't think they're sweating it any. So within the opening credits, we've got six deaths already. And there's a total of 32. So that puts us about 20% into the death count. Now, I could make fun of this movie and say that there is a lot of cheesy jokes and puns throughout it. And some might call me hypocritical for doing that. True! However, when I do it, my videos are somewhere between 3 to 15 minutes long. This movie is 78 minutes long. 85 minutes if you own the Blu-ray. Why would you own on the Blu-ray. Throughout this movie, we see bad jokes of people dying in weird ways that usually lead to another bad joke. I'll give you an example. Mr. Green, who is the local delicatessen owner, is killed by his own menorah, only to lead the police who find the body say, that doesn't look kosher. If you don't know what that means, read a Jewish book. One of the leads is named Nicholas Yulson. Nick Yulson. Really? And his grandfather, who's played by Robert Culp, gets trampled upon by Santa's <coughs> reindeer, which is actually played by a buffalo. What do we hear when that happens? Grandpa got run over by a reindeer. I'll give one more example. The police captain's last name is Kalk. C-A-U-L-K. Yeah, and he dies by getting his nether region tased. One of the jokes about that? Nicholas goes and tells his girlfriend, Mary Mac McKenzie, that he sucks. Caulk is what she says when she's confirming what Nick is talking about. Uh, personally, if I'm going to use the word caulk as the last name of a character in a movie, he's going to be a plumber. But hey, that's my sense of humor. So why do we have senseless violence in the movie? Well, during the movie, we find out in stop-motion animation the exposition. You know, like the old Rankin-Bass Christmas shows. The exposition is that Santa is the spawn of Satan, and he kills people on Christmas up to the year 1005. And at that time, we find out that an angel defeated him and sentenced him to deliver for Christmas presents for a thousand years. How did the angel defeat him? In a curling match. What's curling? Think horseshoes on ice. 
But if you want to know specifics, read a sports book. So anyways, a thousand years have gone by and Santa's free to kill people again. So I asked myself, is this senseless violence good? Yes, it is for the typical horror movie. And in typical horror movie fashion, the characters are very stereotypical. Like Pastor Timmons, who's played by Dave Thomas, who is a crooked minister and likes strippers. And speaking of strippers, I have to say that the strip club scene is the one scene that I genuinely laughed at. A stripper slides down the pole to escape the slaughter that's happening in the strip club by Santa. Santa then goes to grab the pole to use it as a weapon. As he grabs for the stripper pole, he thinks twice. And what does he do? He grabs some spray cleaner and a rag to clean it off first. I guess I never really thought about the cleanliness of a stripper pole, so that joke kind of caught me off guard and I really laughed out loud on that one. Now, is the writing in this movie bad? Yes. And unfortunately, a lot of the self-humor is lost on people. Are the special effects good? Yes, when it comes to the practical effects, but the later effects, like the fireball shooting out of Santa's mouth, not so much. Is the acting good? For what it's worth, because we really don't have top caliber talent here. Really, the best talent of the movie were killed in the opening credits. The problem that I have with this movie is that I don't know what it was trying to be foremost. If it was trying to be a comedy, then the humor should have been better. If they were trying to be just a horror movie, then they got the gratuitous violence and nudity there too. However, it wasn't gory or scary, so it was just really violent for the sake of violence. This makes me feel that it failed on numerous levels because it didn't really fully commit to what it should be, whatever that is. If you want to see a scary Christmas horror movie, there are plenty out there to choose from. This isn't one of them. To be honest, there is an episode from Tales from the Crypt where a psycho is dressed up as Santa Claus, and that is much more scarier and more in the realm of horror than this movie ever will be. So the final result for this... Stream this for free. Don't rent it. Don't buy it. So what horror movie based around Christmas is your favorite? Which one is the scariest to you? Share and like the video if you liked it. Plus, don't forget to subscribe so you're notified the moment I upload. And I will see you in the next video.